Welcome River Church. How's everybody doing this morning? Awesome. We're glad that you are here and that God has something special for you today. He's going to impact your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and I'm going to be ministering on something this morning. I'll just give you uh, as I greet you this morning, uh, really what, what had been put on my heart by the Lord was this. And so I'm going to minister along these lines is you have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who I just felt I sense the anointing on it. You have a purpose. And I believe even this morning, God will speak to you about that purpose. He will equip you for that purpose. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you everything that you need. He will strengthen you. Amen. Amen. But that's really what I what I've what the spirit of the Lord put on my heart this morning to minister along those lines. Amen. Because Amen. many people and as pastors, we can tell you one of the questions we get asked the most is what's my purpose? Mm -hmm. People don't know what I mean. Look, you can go. Anywhere you go, you're going to run into people. Amen? And it's like they just go through life just existing. We're not called here just to exist. Amen? Amen. So true. Amen. So there's much more. There's a higher calling. Amen? So that's what I'm going to minister this morning. But I do want to talk to even everybody. I want to welcome you that are watching and listening as well. Amen. That next Sunday, and I don't know if we're going to stream this. We'll see. I mean, I might. Depends if I get some requests to, but, or enough of them. But we are going to have Liberty Sunday this coming Sunday. Amen. Yes. Liberty Sunday. And it's going to be powerful. Amen. So Amen. you that are watching and listening, we invite you to come be a part of it if you're in South Texas. Liberty Sunday. Now, we all know, I didn't know this until after the fact, but we all celebrate Memorial Day on the 25th. So the day after mm -hmm. is Memorial Day. So it just so happened, but that's been, putting, been put on my heart, and I think I've probably shared it with a couple of you, but I really feel in my heart. You say, Liberty, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about actually this nation as a, as a Christian nation, the, pro, the divine providence of this nation, <clears throat> But we're going to talk about, obviously, liberation from things. Like right now, people need to be liberated from fear. Amen. So true. People need to be liberated from wearing the mask. Yes. So if you want to be set free and not wear the mask anymore, then we're going to, we ask you to come. Yes. Or watch this. Amen. Because you're going to be liberated from wearing masks anymore. Amen. Amen. Come on. No, I'm serious. I mean, you're going to be liberated. There's things that are holding you back. Amen. 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 There are things that are holding people back. I'm not saying you necessarily or anyone here, but there's things that hold people back. Amen. Yes. So, but we're going to talk a lot about, you know, the constitution, but we're going to talk about the word of God. Amen. Which is our constitution. This is the will of God. Amen. This is, yes. I mean, yes, there's the supreme law of the land in America, but we have the supreme law. God's word. Amen? Amen. Which, which outranks, outrules, outranks everything and anything. Amen? Yes. But I don't want to get too much along, you know, those lines this morning, but that's what we're going to talk about. Amen? And it's going to be a great service. We probably have some goodies and things like that we'll give away and hand out. Amen? But invite people because it's going to be a message. Amen? About liberty. And liberty is an awesome thing, but it comes with a price. Yes. Everybody treats it. I believe a lot of people, and we could see even generations that raise that are that are being raised up now, they don't appreciate it. That's right. You can never stop appreciating it. Amen? Yeah. So true. So, I mean, and I'll tell you this, and if you don't like it, that's just too bad. Mm -hmm. But we were watching one of the ads from Donald Trump for president. And Pastor Glory can tell you, I'm like, I started crying. Is that right? She showed it to me, actually. You saw it. And she showed it to me. And I'm watching this thing, and I'm just crying. I'm just crying. Because I just have a heart for America. I mean, obviously, I have a heart for the nation. But who cares about this nation? Who cares about the people in this nation? Amen? Who cares about people? But you understand. I mean, there is a fight going on. And that's why it's important for you to understand and to know what your purpose is. 
what God has called you to do because that needs to get done. Amen? Hallelujah. But let's pray this morning and then we'll get into the sermon. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you're a good God and your mercy endureth forever, Lord God, that you have a plan for us. There is a purpose and a plan for each and every individual as everyone listens this morning, that they would receive from heaven, Lord God, heaven's mandate, that they would know what their purpose is, that Lord God, they would know that you will strengthen them, give them all the resources they need to fulfill that purpose. That as this day and this hour as the church, many of the church is asleep, Lord, but I believe there is a revival coming in the body of Christ that will revive the church. And then there will be a great spiritual awakening to turn America around and the nations of this world around. Yes, there is gross darkness, but there is light. And light always will overcome and overtake and overpower the darkness. Yes. And I thank you, Lord God, for raising us up that you handpicked us for such a time as this. And today, I believe there is an anointing that you will release this morning upon your people that will strengthen them, encourage them, touch them, Lord God. Those that are weary, those that have been struggling, that, Lord, you will strengthen them this morning. They will get a clear word from heaven that you will touch them. Just one touch, Lord, from you will change our lives forever. We're looking for that touch this morning. As you, this morning, touch your people, touch everyone here, touch everyone watching, touch, touch everyone listening, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God, in a powerful way, in a profound way, and speak to them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So who's ready for next, I mean, next Sunday? I'm already ready for it. Amen? amen. And we'll have different things that we do and... You know, it's going to be awesome. Just, just don't miss it. Don't miss it. Amen? Amen. And advertise it. Tell everybody about it. Liberty Sunday. I just can't. I just feel like something's going to happen. Like there's going to be a breakthrough. Like there's going to be, like something's going to happen. Amen? <clears throat> that, I mean, I'm talking breakthrough. Like this is like, get ready. Amen? Amen? We're going to see every wicked plan of the enemy come to naught. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? Is that awesome? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's get into the word this morning, looking at what your plan is. Amen. That's given to you by God. Not your plan, but God's plan for your life. Amen. Yes. There's a heavenly mandate. Amen. Amen. But you have a purpose. Go with me and we're going to look at some foundational scriptures here. Go with me at uh, 1 Samuel. Amen. 17. 1 Samuel 17, let me give you kind of the key uh, foundational scriptures we're going to look in 17 to start with, amen? But we're going to look at, that's 1 Samuel 17, verses 8, 9, and 10, verses 26, verses 29, 36, and 37, amen? That's 1 Samuel 17, Verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. Well, let's go through 10. 8, 9, and 10. 26, 29, 36, and 37. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Starting verse 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. 
Give me a man that we may fight together. And then verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Verse 29. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Amen? See, David, David saw something, and now he's going to react to that something. Amen? And the reason he is going to do something about it is because of this very statement. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause right now in America? Is there not a cause, church? Amen? Verse 36 and 37, let me read those. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? Look, I want to tell you this morning, there are a lot of things out there that have a purpose and their purpose is to come against the things of God. Awesome. Muslims have a purpose. Sickness has a purpose. Terrorists have a purpose. Satan has a purpose. I mean, you can look at everything from Zika virus to Ebola to coronavirus. It has a purpose. But church, you have a purpose too. Amen? Yes. Where their purpose is to bring death and destruction, your purpose is to bring life and freedom. Amen? Your purpose is to bring healing and health. Amen? There are many things out there with a purpose and their purposes are to oppose God. That's why you have to make sure, is your purpose opposing God or is it supporting God's plan? Are the churches across America shut? What purpose are they fulfilling? Are they fulfilling the government's purpose? Are they fulfilling the very purpose of the coronavirus to bring fear and intimidation? And bring sickness. Got real quiet. Yes, you see there is a purpose out there. To destroy the moving of the spirit of God. There is a purpose out there to stop the church. Here we look at David. Goliath and the army of the Philistines. Had a purpose to destroy God's people. But I'm here to tell you this morning. That every enemy, the devil himself, can try to come against the church, but he will not overtake the church. For Jesus has conquered the grave. Jesus yeah. has conquered the, the devil. Yeah. Jesus has conquered sickness and disease. Yeah. And church, get ready. You're going to rise up. Is there not a cause? You have a purpose, and that is to walk in triumph, and that is to walk in victory. Amen. Amen. So every purpose that is contrary to God's purposes and plans, we should be involved in coming against. If there's anything that's coming against the church, and you say, well, how do you know that? Even those that might mock and say, well, how do you know that the church will overcome? Because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Jesus has overcome. And you know what? Jesus actually made the devil and his demons open mockery of them. In front, you understand. Jesus has conquered. 
So we are more than conquerors. Amen. So our purpose, and many times you say, well, look at David. He was going to go into battle against Goliath. But really, was he called to battle or was he called to victory? He was called to victory. Amen. Yes, yes there might be a battle, but with that battle, you will have the victory. Remember this. Look, you've gone through things in life, but yet you still are alive. You are here today. Amen? Yes. Who's gone through some battles? Who's gone through some stuff? Amen? Yes. You might be going through a battle right now, but you're still here. God has kept you alive, and He has given you the tools. He has given you the strength. Amen? Amen. Just like David, he said, I killed the bear. I killed the lion. Amen? Just like God gave me the strength to kill the lion and the bear, Goliath is going the same way. Amen? Never forget what God has done in your life. If you are here today, if you are alive today, amen? God has kept you alive for a reason. And that reason is to fulfill His purpose for you. Not your purpose, but that you have a purpose that you would fulfill that purpose. Amen? God has something for you to do. Don't try to be like anybody else. It's not about doing what anyone else is doing. It's about doing what God has called you to do. Yes. Amen? Yes. God does not need imitators. Amen? If you imitate anyone, it should be Jesus Christ. But he doesn't need you. You know, there's too many people that go around and they just imitate people. You know what they are? They're just many knees. Who's ever seen that show? Austin Powers. He had a mini me. And that's all you become is a mini me when you just imitate other people rather than being an imitator of Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Because if there is a big Jesus in you, then there should be a big Jesus coming through you. Amen? Hallelujah. That's why I'm reminded, my pastor says the story all the time about this Indian chief that went to these meetings and he would watch people get touched by God. And at the very end of the meeting, he came up to the preacher and he said, me no want little Holy Ghosts that go, hallelujah, hallelujah. Me want big Holy Ghosts that go, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I mean, is that what the church has come to? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Big Jesus. Big Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. So big Jesus, big Holy Ghost coming through us. Amen. Amen. So believers, you have a purpose. Amen. So what about the church? Are we as resolute and persistent in the things of God, in our pursuits for the things of God, than the enemy is? That's a great question. Because they have a very big conviction, mm -hmm. and you see it come out. But the church stays quiet. The church stays silent. I just wonder how many people that proclaim to be believers... If they said, we are going to come and pick you up and put you on a bus, put you on a train car and send you somewhere where you will be safe, how many people would get on that bus or get on that train car? I believe there would be lines of them, unfortunately, that would just get on so they can go be safe. You know, there are plans right now to do that. You, you're going to have a choice. Take the vaccine or get on the train. So there's got to be a stand, church. Amen? There is a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen? Yes. And I tell you what, that purpose and plan is designed already for you to be more than a conqueror, for you to overtake and overcome every plan of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let it be so. Look, they actually surrounded, we could see the prophets of old where they surrounded them. Amen? The enemy had a plan would surround them. But then you could see, even 
where Elijah says, Lord, open the eyes of my servant so he can see what I see. And there around about the hills were chariots of fire, where there were horses, where there were the host of heaven, amen, where there were angels to protect them. And he says, there are more with us than there are with them. Have we forgotten church? Why has the church become so complacent and so silent? What's happened to you? Many Amen? Reasons. Many reasons. So just like we can see all these things that bring death and destruction, we bring life. Amen? Amen. We have a holy calling to be salt and the light in the world. And I believe that we should be the most determined, zealous, and purposeful people on the planet. Amen? The church. Not scared, not timid, not afraid. Amen? But purposeful. We should be zealous. Not just doing things halfway. Amen? Seems like a lot of people do that. Or either they're all talk, no action. Amen? Right. That should never be the case for the church. This is not a time for the church to be passive, to be dormant, to be timid. Instead of bemoaning, which means to be discontent and just complaining about the decay or destruction of the world around us, the Word of God admonishes us to do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, 14 through 15. That's what I read to you right now. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless. Amen? Amen. Children of God without fault. Too many times people are going around moaning and complaining about everything. You know, they'll moan and complain about their church, even now, with their church. Why are churches being open? They're going to make themselves lethal. They're going to get the people sick. They're going to get, you don't understand what I'm saying. It happens right in the body of Christ. That just means it's a sick body. That's right. No faith. It's a good way to put it. A a body without faith is a very sick body. Yes. Amen? It is. I know that some believers are certainly on fire, but what will it take for the church world to awaken from its lethargy and complacency for believers to shake free from their sense of self-interest? How many people are just their self-interest? It's what's going to benefit them. Me, my, I, us for no more. For believers to shake free, amen, and become consumed with a passionate and compelling purpose. What is it going to take? You see, you have a purpose. That's a God-given purpose. What is it going to take, amen, for you to wake up and to say, God... Whatever it is you want me to do, I will do it. Wherever it is you want me to go, I will go there. Whatever it is, I know, Lord, I can't do it in my own strength. I can't do it on my own. But I can do it with you. For all things are possible to you, God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. And you want to get right on the same plane filled as God? Not that you are God, but it says that all that believe, amen, there's nothing impossible for them either. Amen? Yeah. You just have to believe. You just have to have faith. Amen? Come on, but where is that passion? Have, has the church gone asleep? Are they at sleep? Yes, they are. Is the church sick? Yes, in many aspects. That's why they need to be revived. Amen? They need to be set ablaze by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Not just complacent. Not just sitting around. Amen? Amen? The purpose for which we are born. 
What is that purpose? You might ask yourself this morning, what is that purpose? I'll tell you that purpose. That purpose is to get and catch the anointing, to get involved in God's work. Amen? Not man's work. Hallelujah. But get involved in what God would have you to do. That's to get the purpose that God has specifically for you and then run with it. Amen? Hallelujah. In, con in contemplating this, the Lord reminded me of the holy fire that burned in the hearts of various spiritual leaders throughout history. Amen? It was individuals who were aflame with a, a sense, and get this, you need to catch this, of their divine calling. Amen? Of their divine calling and destiny who radically affected the course of human events. Can you imagine their lives because they caught what God's purpose, what the divine plan of God was for their lives, they affected the world around them. Amen? Amen. Can you imagine this? May we have such a holy awakening again. Amen? And I'm not just talking in a few. I'm not just talking in one and two believers. I'm talking about the body of Christ. That there would be this kind of awakening in the body of Christ. Can you imagine? If everybody, like a blueprint from heaven, at the same time, got downloaded into the believers, and they all got their marching orders, they all checked in for service, and they're ready to go. Amen? Can you imagine the impact it would have upon this nation and upon the nations of the world if all of a sudden, amen, God would move through His body because the body woke up. Amen? Because His body got up from being asleep and being dead and being sick. Amen? Hallelujah. That's why I believe with all my heart that just like the, the Israelites were freed from Egypt, it said when they left, there was not one feeble or sick one among them, and they stripped Egypt of its wealth. There will be, hallelujah, a time, I believe it's coming, that just like when, before Jesus returns and calls his bride home, hallelujah, that guess what? You, there will not be one feeble one among us. There would be not one sick one in the body of Christ. And we would have stripped the world of its wealth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because it seems like what needs to be done is we need to strip it of its power right now. Because it has power and it has influence over too many people. That's why these media companies. You know what? And I even told this Pastor Gloria, even yesterday we were talking about it. I said, you know, there's all these businesses now. I'm getting emails from all these different businesses that how they're setting up their plan to reopen and how they're going to do it safely and how they're going to do all these things to help the community how you know i told her, i said i really don't care if they open that might sound really bad because it might put some people out of work but you know what desperation is not a bad thing if it's used the right way amen if see if they get a hold of the right thing amen there are businesses that shouldn't open that's right. Who agrees? There are some businesses they should never reopen. They should have never been open in the, in the first That's place. Right. That's why right now you've got in Congress, you've got a wicked Democratic majority leader in the House, and she is planning to fund with your tax dollars through these stimulus bills, this $3 trillion funding abortions. You see, there are things that need to be shut down and closed forever. Amen? Yes, amen. It's amazing how people will argue with you because you're not wearing a mask because it, per, it might infect them or it might affect them. Yet it's okay for them to have abortions. Mm. Or perform. perform abortions or support abortions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where death is certain. When you snuff out a baby's life, and kill that baby. It is a certain thing that is happening. It is what is actually happening. Not a what if. You might not be able, you know, you have to wear a mask because I have a 95 year old mother at home or grandmother or whatever that maybe, might be, when I go and I visit her, when. I mean, you know, that's a whole other thing. I mean, you. Yeah. You're saying, well, yeah, these are the stories that people say. 
It might affect my 95-year-old grandmother at home. Right. Maybe sort of, kind of. You see what I'm saying is, it's time to wake up, church. Amen? It's time to wake up. Because I look at these people that were touched by God radically. Amen? That changed and transformed the whole landscape of nations. Amen? Through their passion. Let there be a holy awakening happen again. Amen? We're praying for it. We're believing God for it. Amen? And we're going to do everything what God has called us to do to see it happen. Amen? Yes. We are at a time when going through the motions or business as usual won't produce the results we need to see from the church. That's what we're living in. In this time. Amen? Let me just say it this way. Church, we are at a crossroads. Amen? Amen? And I believe it is a time at these crossroads that God is looking to who is faithful and who is not. He is seeing who is my bride and who is not. Who has been an imitator but having an affair with the world. God is looking. Who's out there that claims to be my bride but is, just has been prostituting themselves to the world? Look, I just say it as it is. Amen? Because that's what it is. We're the church in many ways. Look, I'm not making any accusations or any judgment. But I will say this, the fruit of it is very evident. That those that claim to be Christians. Look, I use this as an example all the time. If they arrested you for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? <laughs> Amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think many people, they'd be arrested. Wait, you call yourself a Christian? You're not a Christian. Get out of here. Amen? Come on, church. But look at David. In David's day, we read, in, if you just go back to verse 4 of 1 Samuel, verse 17, verse 4, it says, a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. You know, hell has always had its champions. And we see spiritual wickedness raising its ugly head in our day as well. But I will tell you this, God has his champions. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hell might have its champions, but heaven has its champions. And I believe that's what you're marked by. Amen. The hand of God called as a champion of the kingdom of God to overcome every champion or thing that would call itself a champion against the kingdom of God. That would come against the kingdom of God. That is from the kingdom of hell. So hell has its champions. But God has his champions. You decide whose champion you want to be. Amen? Amen? That's a good word. Did I show up at the wrong church this morning? <laughs> Come on, this should really get you riled up. I mean, this is a word for the now. I'm telling you. Yes. yes. You have a purpose. Absolutely. There is a heavenly mandate upon your life. While others cowered in fear, David arose in confidence. When he was criticized by his brothers for his proactive faith, he responded this way. Look at verse 29. 1 Samuel 17, verse 29. What have I done now? Is there not a cause David's literal statement was, is it not a word? Amen. That was his, his literal, is it not worth it? Amen. Is it not worth it? Perhaps as some commentators suggest, 
David was merely saying that he was only asking a question. You know, they try to, he's only asking this question. Amen? However, it seems obvious that David did, in fact, have a significant sense of purpose. Amen? David had a significant sense of purpose or a cause, that there was a cause. Amen? Operating in his life. You know, it amazes me because it took this young boy, very young man, who was taking care of the sheep, amen, taking care of herds and flocks, rather that it's him that recognized that there's a cause. Isn't that something? You know, it's quite fitting now why? Was David king? He was not king yet. Amen? How many of the pastors and preachers and evangelists, even in America, sit back and be silent when there is a cause? God is looking, amen, not just for a preacher, but for you. A regular person going about their life in a regular way. Amen? He is not looking for someone that has elite status or has some certain, has made it. Amen? He is looking for regular people to rise up and to recognize that there is a cause and that that cause of God now needs to overtake the cause of the enemy. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That inside of you. I mean, if you grab a hold of this this morning, I'm telling you what, this is probably at least for me because I'm receiving it. Amen? I'm receiving, I'm hearing this from heaven for myself and taking it for myself. Amen? Yes. This is probably one of the most powerful sermons for me. I'm just telling you, personally, this is powerful because God's not looking, amen, to those that have already arrived or claim that they have arrived. He's looking for regular people that would then say, Lord, use me. I am ready. I am here. I am available. Lord, and I've seen the lion and I've seen the bear already that you've taken them out. And I'm now going to go for the juggler. Amen? Yes. Of the giant. Yes. Amen to that. Whew. Victory is ours. So David recognized that there is a purpose or a cause operating in his life. And he had been radically empowered by the word of God. Is there not a word? Amen? Is there not a word? Meaning just one word from God. Amen? He, he got a word from God. Yes. Was David just speaking of his own, knowing who he was, or knowing who he was in Christ? Knowing the God that he served? I love it because you can see he recognized that Goliath, the enemy, was not serving the living God. This uncircumcised Philistine, he said... He serves false gods, gods that are dead, gods that have no power, but I serve the living God. Amen? He recognized that the Philistine and the enemy was not in covenant with God, but that he was in covenant with God. Amen? Yes. Church, do you know that you're in covenant with God? Do you know his covenant? Are you in covenant with him? Amen? Well, you'll know that because he's taken the lion and the bear. And now he's going to do the same with Goliath. Amen? Hallelujah. So you can see, God has birthed in David a covenant-based faith. And it propelled David into doing great exploits for God. Did you get that? Let me say that again. God had birthed in David a covenant-based faith. And it propelled David into doing great exploits for God. You say, well, how? Because he listened to the word of the Lord. Amen? Yes. So his faith was being built up. Yes. When you listen to the word of God, amen? When God's word comes into your life, it is going to build up your life. And your life is going to be based on faith. Not based on anything else. Amen? Not based on a man. Not based on anything, any system, any establishment, but it will be based on God and His Word. 
You know, Jeremiah, this is pretty awesome when you look at it. Jeremiah, so great was his burden for Judah that Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. Did you know that? Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because of this burden that he had for Judah. Where is the burden for souls? Amen? Where is the burden for America? Where is the burden for this? Amen? People that are lost and hurting. Where is it, church? Amen? Hallelujah. To the point where Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. He prophesied during the years leading up to the conquest of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Heaven, heaven, and you know what? He was heavily persecuted for it. But he spoke for the word of God. Why? Because he's warning them. We are warning you, church. We are warning you, America. It's time to wake up. It's time to turn from your wicked ways. It's time to turn away from the things of the world. It's time, church, to stop prostituting yourself. Look, in Bible school, there was a, a Bible school student who preached a sermon, because you all, in homiletics, you have to, which is the art of the preparation of a sermon. That's what homiletics is. Isn't that something? You preached a 10-minute sermon. She preached a sermon called the Sunday Whore. That that's what people do. They go to church all dressed up on Sunday, but the rest of the week, they're really a whore. They're living in the world. Church, it's time to wake up. Amen? Look, I say this, and I'm going to come under persecution, but Jeremiah did. He came under heavily, heavily persecuted. Amen? Jeremiah said in, in 20, verse 9, I'll read it in the New Living Translation, but if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in His name, his word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it anymore. Amen. It's like it's got to you come to a point where Lord, this is burning in me. It's on the inside of me. I can't stop it. I can't contain it. I'm not going to try to contain it anymore. I'm going to release what your purpose is, Lord God. I'm going to release what your plan is. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I've got to release this thing. I can't contain it anymore. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. Amen? Hallelujah. It's time, church, to be set ablaze by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Don't let it be shut up anymore. But release that purpose. Release that faith. Release that anointing in your life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus, amen. As preachers and ministers, we should not step into the pulpit because we have to say something. But because we have something to say, it shouldn't be because we have to say something. No. It's because we have something to say. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. And then we demonstrate that. Amen. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Jeremiah spoke penetrating words from the heart and mind of God. They were live coals of fire. Do you understand what he spoke? We're like live coals of fire. Look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah held a respectable position in the administration of the Persian king. Artaxerxes. I mean, he's got an interesting name. But God had a greater assignment for him. Amen? See, Nehemiah had a very respectable. That's how many people are. I'm okay. I'm doing good. I have a good job. I get a good salary. I have health insurance. My kids' colleges, you know, tuition's paid for. I'm doing, I'm, you know, and I have to be respectable. I mean, I can't, my goodness, I mean, I can't do anything that would question who I am. My goodness, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a respectable person. Who cares about your reputation? Who cares about being respectable? Who cares? So you rather be respectable. I tell you what, that same person says, well, i got to be respectable. You know what? You just go to their home on Super Bowl Sunday and they're probably a complete wreck and mess and a drunk and a just, 
Do you understand? I mean, just take them to a football game, NFL or anything else. They'll be yelling out there. They'll be the one with the cheese head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Painted half their face yellow and the other, do you understand? Other side green or whatever. Although we're in Texas, we're cowboy fans. But we do have some cheese heads here. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying is, you know what I mean? I'm a respectable person, but you get them out and they're, you can see they're just a complete fool. They just act. So you can see Nehemiah, he, was a, he had a respectable position. But you see, God had another assignment for him. Amen? God had another assignment for him. Many years after the destruction of Jerusalem, he encountered some individuals who had recently been to the city as it was being resettled. Can you under, understand what was happening? Like they're going. You catch this this morning. If you catch this, get ready. Amen? You understand? Some of the churches, and I'll just say this, some of the churches, it's almost like they have to be resettled. It's sad to say, I, I don't even want to see it. We never close our doors. Amen? Amen. Amen. Never. So if you need a resettlement location that is not going to compromise to the world and not going to bow down to the government, welcome home. This is your place. Amen? Amen. No, I'm saying, this is, this is it. We're not, comprom we're not complacent. I know many of pastors just cowered down. I mean, you listen to their tweets and you listen to their Facebook posts and you're like, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have, I mean, we're going to have drive up services so we can, why didn't you open your doors when your doors could have always been open? Yes. Maybe it's because you didn't have a pair and need to grow a pair. I, many preachers do. Yeah. Exactly. Just saying. I mean, there's many a people that'll be offended by that statement. They get offended. You're more offended by that than people dying and going to hell. That's right. You ugly thing, you. Come on, I'm just going to preach it the way it is. That's why I just don't care. I don't care what they say. I don't care. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't care. Amen? Amen. Nehemiah 1, verses 2 through 4, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation, says, as I... I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. You see, rebuilding the broken walls was not just a good idea to Nehemiah. It was a God idea. Yes. You know, many of the church, it's a good idea. Well, that sounds good. The government tells me, so that sounds good. We'll do that. But is it God's idea? Was it God's idea for the churches to close their doors? I guarantee you, no. Right. Because if the church closes their doors, they might as well stay closed. Because they're not the church. They're just an arm of the state. I'm just saying it the way it is. Is that the way it is, church? Hello? Hey. Amen. Yeah. Am I saying the truth or am I saying the truth? Yes. yes. It's the way it is. Besides, I would not, I would not follow some coward that would shut their doors. And would bow down and kiss the ring of the government. Or kiss the ring of some political leader. My God. I would not want to be. I would not be caught dead following that person. Because they're going to lead me off a cliff somewhere. They're going to lead me in a ditch somewhere. They're not going to lead me into the righteous things of God. They're gonna, not going to lead me by the word of God. They're not going to lead me by faith. And they have no demonstration anyway in what they preach and minister. My goodness. When you put your faith in medical science, give me a break. You got a problem. It's called no faith. What would Jesus be talking to you? What would Jesus be telling you? Ye of little faith. Oh, you wicked generation. You faithless generation. 
What would Jesus be telling you? If Jesus needs to perform the miracle and he would need to clear the room, he, you, would you be the one that he would ask to leave? Or would he ask you to stay? You say, well, no, Jesus never would do that. Yes, he did it. He, did. he says, I'm about to perform the miraculous, but I need you to leave because I can't perform the miraculous with you in the room. Oh, but I love you, Jesus. I love you. Yes, I know you do, but you have no faith. And you being here will prevent this man or this woman from getting a miracle. Why? Because your focus was on the flesh rather than on faith. Your focus was on what the government said rather than what God said. I'm hitting it this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. This, you better grab a hold of this. Amen? Amen. Because there's a time coming. Amen? There will be another. Just wait. But this is the wonderful thing with the message today. Amen? It's not to judge you. It's to tell you so you will wake up and you'll get back to God. Yes. Amen? Amen? you got to get back. you got to say, no, I'm never going to do it. Lord, even look, you pastors, you preachers, you, you shut your door, you did whatever it is that you did because you were too coward to make a stand, then guess what? Repent yes. and tell God, I'll never do it again. Amen? Amen. And then open your doors. And then get to work. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So we could see, rebuilding the wall was not just a good idea. It was God kind of idea. It was a God idea. Amen? The yearning, the burning desire for the reconstruction of those walls became part of the fabric of who Nehemiah was. Amen? That's how. That's why you say, well, how you, why are you saying this? Or why are you saying this to all these churches? You know what? Because it's my heart to actually see people saved, healed, delivered, empowered, that they would fulfill the call of God upon their lives. Amen? Yes. That they would not run from the call, but they would run to the call. Amen? Amen. That they would not run from the things of God, they would run to the things of God. Amen? Yes. Amen. We want people that are going to be touched and transformed. That's my heart. Amen? Amen. Come on. It's time, I mean, and it's a lot, it's a big responsibility on the leaders. Do you understand? But they have not been acting like leaders. So you say, that's me. Well, guess what? Then just repent and go do what God's called you to do. Maybe this message is just for you. So you would wake up, recognize what you've done wrong, turn your back on the wrong, repent, Come to Jesus. Have a You need to just have a meeting with Jesus. Yes. Do business with God. He'll do business with you. And then move forward. Amen? Amen. Learn from those mistakes. Turn from those mistakes. And never make them again. My goodness. Amen? Amen? Look at the apostles. When Peter and John were threatened to speak no more in the name of Jesus, they responded with this. You can go to Acts 4.20 to find it there. Acts 4, verse 20. This is how they responded. Remember, they were threatened. Don't use that name. You can't preach in that name, Jesus. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to speak what we've seen and what we've heard. Amen. That's why you've got to speak the things that you see and that you hear. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to speak those things. Amen. God said it. I'm not going to shut up from saying it. Amen? Amen. God's word. That is the compass for my life. That is his promises for my life. Amen? Amen? That is what is mine and I receive it. And I won't stop speaking of it. Amen? Amen. Where did such boldness come from? Amen? They had not been lulled into complacency by the world. Did you get that? It's because they did not listen to the lullaby and just fall asleep and become complacent and get into bed with the world. They were not preoccupied with anything the world had to offer. Amen? 
They didn't preoccupy. They had prioritized. We are serving God with all our heart. Don't give place to anything. Amen? That's not of God. That's what happened is. That's what's happening now. It's just a result. It's very telling. Because you could see where the church preoccupied themselves with other things that were more important. Yes. Amen? Yes. Can I get a better amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Look, I'm going to read something A.W. Tozer wrote. A.W. Tozer. He wrote, The early church was in wonderment at Christ. He dazzled them and stirred within such feelings of amazement that they could never get over Christ. All they talked about was Christ. All they thought about from morning to night was Christ. Christ was their only reason for living. And they were more than willing to die for him. What's happened? Amen? Could you say that the same today? No. no. Very different things today. Would they die for him? No. But they sure would self-quarantine. They sure would self-lock themselves away. They sure themselves would just let the government just write them a check every month and pay their bills and become... Do you understand what I'm saying? Would they allow the church doors to be closed or would they stand up and fight? You see, right here, this is a perfect picture. The early church, A.W. Tozer, writing about. The early church, say, they had such conviction. They had an eternal focus. Amen? Amen. You see, you have a purpose, church. You have a purpose. You that are watching and listening, you have a purpose. That, but the, you only get that purpose if there's an eternal focus. If there's an, a sense of eternity. That's why it's very revealing that you could see where the church has lost its sense of eternity because of how they react to this things in this time. Yes. That's right. That's right. Very telling, very revealing. Paul, you could see Paul, before his conversion, you know, he was Saul of Tarsus. But when he was Saul of Tarsus, what was he? He was a ravenous. I mean, killer and persecutor of the church. That's what, can you imagine? He was ravenous in the determination to persecute the church, to come against the church. When his life was transformed by the Lord Jesus, those destructive desires were replaced by holy ambition. Amen? And sanctified resolve. Totally transformed. That's why you can see people, they were drunks in the world, then they get saved, then they're drunks on the, on the new wine of heaven. Amen? Yes. They're drunk on the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yes. You see, he was passionate about persecuting the church. But then he got, he had that encounter. He got transformed. He got saved. He got empowered. And he was passionate about Jesus. Amen? He was passionate about the gospel. He was passionate about people and them coming into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but also passionate that they would receive the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yes. He was passionate. Amen? Amen? There was nothing casual or lax about Paul's commitment. Amen? Paul was 100% in. All in. Amen? Yes. We got to be all in, church. Yes. All in. His consecration is clearly seen as he spoke of those of his own race who did not know Jesus. He was passionate about it. You could see. But his consecration, he didn't care what they said. Amen? He didn't care how much he got persecuted. He said this in Romans 9, 1 through 3. I'll read it in the New Living Translation. That's Romans 9, 1 through 3. Paul said, With Christ as my witness, I speak with other, utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people. My Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, 
if that would save them. Amen? He had such a conviction. That's why, I mean, I'll just watch videos. I'll hear the Star Spangled Banner. I'll begin to cry because, see, there's such conviction in my heart for them. I'll lay down my life for them. That's why I never close the church's door because I would lay down my life for people in need of help. I will lay down my life for the gospel. I will lay down my life. You understand? For people. Look, Jesus, he laid down his life for complete strangers. Amen? For people that were enemies of him. That did not serve him. Even with taking the chance that they would never serve him. As many have never come to Jesus. But he still laid down his life and was willing to do it. Amen? Shouldn't we be doing the same thing, church? Shouldn't that be our heart? Where do we hear such words today? Amen? Where do we hear this kind of... How many people are satisfied as long as they and their loved ones are saved? Oh, it's okay. I'm saved. My wife's saved. My kids are saved. I'm good. I don't... No. No. It doesn't stop there. Amen? That's a great start, but it doesn't stop there. Amen? Amen. You can't just live in your own little bubble. Amen, church? You can't just... People live in their own little... Amen. Alter universe. I mean, you know, they live in... I mean, that's why... That's why to me, I mean, the, fa- the, the mask and all that, the, it makes perfect sense that people would do it. Why? Because they live in fantasy world on social media. Yeah. That's not even the real them. The yeah, you know who I'm talking... I'm talking to you. Amen? Mm-hmm. No, it's true. I mean, people, come on. There's something different on social media... That's a fantasy version of them. But in real life, their life is a mess. Their life is a wreck. No, I could tell, I could, I could tell you some things, but I'm not. Yeah. Amen? Mm-hmm. You know, they just, you look at them, they're all happy and wonderful in, in real life. That's not the way it is. That's Amen? Right. So it's no wonder. It's just easy. Just hide it behind the mask. Amen? Just saying. No, I'm serious. I mean, you see people driving down the road. One person in their car with their mask on. (laughs) 95 degrees outside. Yeah. And you know what they did? They drove through the drive-thru to get something. They're going to drive home, get into the garage, close the garage. They'll still probably have the mask on. Wake up, people. I mean, my goodness, you know. Don't even get me started on this. Did you see the guy that died, though? His lung burst. Oh, he, ran, he, he was jogging two, two miles. His lung totally collapsed. It punctured because Wearing of the mask. mask. Wearing a yeah. mask. Yeah, they prove it. Look, our Surgeon General says, Mr. Adams says that you're more likely to actually catch it, catch the virus by wearing a mask. So anyway, I, I don't even get, get into that. Amen. Hey, sweetheart, give me that thing, baby. I'm going to read this. I'm going to ask you a question. The, one, the thing that you had, baby. Can you, can you open that up? I think you have it in a text message. I'm going to ask this question. Amen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you sent. I sent you. Is it right there? You <coughs> Just go to your pictures. Look, question. If masks work, why do businesses need to be closed? If they don't work, why are we forced to wear them? Just think about that one. Wake up, people. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the people that wear them are afraid of those that don't wear them. But if the mask is so effective, why are they afraid of those that don't wear them? They have their, <laughs> they have their mask on. <laughs> In case you couldn't hear that, is people are so afraid that you're not wearing a mask, but yet they're wearing a mask. So actually they don't believe the mask that they're wearing actually protects them. Right. Uh-huh. It's the height of stupidity. There are too many people, they're mentally arthritic. Look that one up. 
I mean, some people, reality, you have to go get a partial lobotomy just to have a discussion with them. You have to wait, excuse me, wait just a minute. I need to go get part of my brain removed so I can have a discussion with you. <laughs> this is, I mean, come on. Who's ever yeah. encountered people like that? Yeah. You're not wearing a mask. They're wearing a mask. Oh, my God. <laughs> so your mask doesn't work. Anyway. So where are we hearing this today, amen? Where are we hearing, just like the resolve of you could see these, amen? Even like Paul, who took a bold stand, amen? Who is crying out for the lost? Who's, who's, who, where do you hear these things, amen? John Knox, who knows who John Knox is? Scot Scotland's leading reformer, amen? Scotland. Might have been, but John Knox, who was Scot Scotland's leading reformer, once knelt in a garden to pray. He was, o he was overheard by another as he cried out. This is what he cried out. God, give me Scotland or I die. Give me Scotland. Who are the God, give me America or I die. Amen? Amen? Look, that's what you're going to see even next week. I don't know if I'm going to scream it though. I just will just see. Give me liberty or give me death. Where's the cry? Amen? Mm. He declared the gospel with boldness. I'm talking about John Knox here. With boldness and his nation was changed. Do you know what was written on his tombstone when he died? When Knox died, the king of, so of Scotland said this. Here lies a man that never feared the faces of men. Mm. The king of Scotland. He never feared the faces of men. Do not fear any person. Doesn't even matter. How you look, how people look, how people mean they look at you, what they're going to do. Never fear. Amen? Amen. Tozer, get this, who I quoted earlier, also said, come near to the holy man, holy men, let me rephrase, let me say it, I'm going to read it exactly, okay? Come near the, to the holy men and women of the past, and you will soon feel the heat of their desire after God. They mourned for him. They prayed and wrestled and sought for him day and night, in season and out. And when they found him, the finding was all the sweeter for the long seeking. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, a line had to be drawn in the sand. Amen? A line. And just like Tozer, just like you could see with John Knox, just like you can see with great men and women, they crossed over. Amen? Hallelujah. A consuming burning vision governed him. Look, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you another quote. Check this out. Martin Luther King Jr. Who knows who he is? The great civil rights leader. Even if they try to kill you, you develop the inner conviction that there are some things so precious, some things so eternally true that they are worth dying for. And if a person has not found something to die for, that person isn't fit to live. Martin Luther Jr., all in. Amen? Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. If, if you have not found something that you are willing to die for, then does your life even have purpose? Right. In order to live. He said, a consuming burning vision 
governed him, guiding him, and compelled him to move forward in the face of horrific opposition. You see, he was faced with all kinds of opposition, but nothing stopped him. Nothing hindered him. I'm all in. I'm willing to give my life. I'm willing to die. That's why, look, I'll just talk about this. My pastor took a stand. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. He took a stand and was arrested for it. Goes to jail. Got released, it, released on bond, paid it. Paid what he needed to pay, whatever. As of two days ago, all the charges were dropped. And his record expunged. In a matter of days after his arrest, the entire county and city reversed everything. Do you know that every pastor so far that has taken a stand, yes. in 24 to 72 hours, everything is dropped, everything is reversed. Yes. Yes. Yet there's still people, I drove by, I don't know how many churches this morning, they're still closed. They're still living in fear. They're still just surrendered, surrendered their rights. Why? Maybe it has something to do with their faith or their belief system or how much they believe in God's word. Do you know there are atheists defending the church? Yes. The atheists, atheists, agnostics, LGBTQ defending the church. Attorneys defending the churches that take a stand. Because why? Because they know there's a conviction in that believer, in that pastor, to take a stand for something that's right. To take a stand for their liberties and their freedoms. Yes. So the man who said, I have a dream, truly did. And the momentum he achieved as he applied himself to see that dream fulfilled changed the nation. Do you understand? You see, there is the purpose of God for your life. That will change a city. That will change a county. That will change a state. That will change a nation. Amen? Yes. There is inside of you. Was Martin Luther King Jr. special? Was he some great man with a great arm of resources and everything? No. He was just a man. Yes. Just like you. Just a man. Just a woman. But he had a dream. He knew the purpose of God for his life. Yes. There was something he was after and he was going to accomplish it even if it cost him his life. Amen? Yes. Look, terrorists will strap bombs to their body to accomplish their evil plan and sacrifice their lives. Yeah, most Christians... Even pastors sit in Starbucks, drinking their soy lattes, carrying their merce, wearing their skinny jeans, with no conviction, no eternal purpose. That's why, you know, if you see me wearing skinny jeans, hit me upside the head, please. <laughs> if I'm carrying around a soy latte, knock it out of my hand and punch me in the face. Say, wake up. Don't carry a purse, man purse. My goodness. What is this? No, I'm just, it's, hello, that's where we are today. It's like all the pastors want to, you know, there's a whole segment. That's how you got to dress cool and dress like, you know, shredded jeans on. Did you get in a fight with a bear? I mean, what's the deal? Shredded jeans. It's like a cheese grater. Amen. My goodness, you got to fight with your wife. She won. Yeah. Amen. As we've looked at these individuals, I want to make sure I'm not leaving the impression that this is an issue of mere emotionalism. It's not. It's not about just getting emotionalized and doing things based out of our emotions or our feelings. It's about the conviction of God. It's about what God 
Hallelujah. Even now would be speaking into you as you. Something on the inside of you should be happening right now. Something should be happening in your life. Amen. So God, you should be hearing from God right about now. Amen. You should be dealing with things in your heart, even that maybe that have held you back. Maybe there is that complacency. Something's holding you back. There's something there. Will you? It's time to deal with that. Amen. There should be something happening. Amen. I believe God is speaking to people, giving them direction. F.B. Meyer said, Consecration is not the act of our feelings, but of our will. Perhaps this is a good time for many in the church, many of us, to take inventory and to ask ourselves some hard questions. Amen? This really, this is the time. I believe this is a now word as people will grab a hold of it and actually begin to ask yourself the hard questions. Amen? What have I been doing for God? Have I been fulfilling God's will or my own will? Amen? I mean, there should be some things that we will look at. Amen? Amen. You can read it over in Revelation 2, 4. And I'm starting to close with this, but I'm going to give you some more scriptures. Do we passionately love Jesus and others the way we used to? Amen? Or have we somehow regressed and reverted to somehow just going through the motions? Amen? If that's you, good news. Repent. Stop going through the motions. Recognize it. Say, I'm going to stop that. No more just going through the motions. Amen? Because Amen. yes, if that's you, this, you just feel like you've just been spinning your wheels. Mm-hmm. You've been just going through the motions. It's time to get traction. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And the purpose of God is going to reveal that. Amen? The purpose yes. of God in the moment you do, it'll be like you got traction and you're going to take off. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Do we need to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, eradicate complacency, lethargy, religious boredom, or apathy for our lives? Amen? Come on, these are all just questions, and I'm, close, I'm, I'm, I'm winding up. Amen? But no guarantees. Well, maybe winding down. Thank you, Pastor Gloria. Do we have a yearning, burning, compelling, passionate desire to see the lost saved? Amen? Amen. The saved discipled, the church thriving, and the plan of God fulfilled in the earth? These are all questions. I'm just giving you some good questions to ask. Amen? Let's do what Paul admonished Timothy to do. 2 Timothy 2, verse 6. I'll read it in the Amplified Classic. Stir up. Rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you. Amen? Amen. That's my message today. Amen? Come on. Stir up the gifts. Stir that up, those embers. It's time to stoke the flame. You know, I remember we would always, we would go camping. What happens, you know... Even because you stay up late and you're having fun with your family and that fire begins to dwindle, what do you do? You go throw another log on and you get a stick and you begin to poke those embers, amen? You begin to get that flame, you get, begin to, or you'll, you'll blow on it, amen? I remember we, we take the paper plates or whatever it was, you know? The aluminum pans and begin to just get that flame going until it's burning again. Church, it's time. To stoke the flame. Amen. To those embers that are in there. Amen. And to get that fire burning on the inside of us. Amen. To get that fire burned. This is that we're going into summer. It's not time to get into vacation mode. It's time to get on fire for Jesus mode. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This was a hard word, but Jesus told the church in Sardis, you can read this in Revelation 3, verse 2, the Amplified Classic says, Rouse yourselves and keep awake and strengthen and invigorate what remains and is on the point of dying. For I have not found a thing that you have done, any work of yours, 
meeting the requirements of my God or perfect in his sight. Wow. Can you imagine? That's Jesus. Rouse yourselves and keep awake. Because what you've done, everything you've done, it's not met the requirement. Let that never be said about us, church. Amen? Amen. Come on. Let that never be said. Revelation 3.3 3 goes on, and I'm going to read it in the message version, renders this next scripture. Think of the gift you once had in your hands, the message you heard with your ears. Grasp it again and turn back to God. you got to grab a hold of it this morning. Amen? Don't wait. Don't put it off. Grab a hold of it now. Amen? And turn back to God with all that you are. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited. I believe this is a great opportunity. And it's time for the church to rise up. Amen? It's time for the church to take a stand. It's time for the church to open their doors again. Amen? It's time. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time for us to experience what Andrew Murray, the South African writer who lived from 1828 to 1917, described. Get this. He said, A true revival means nothing less than a revolution, casting out the spirit of worldliness and selfishness, and making God and his love triumphant in the heart and life of every person. Amen? Woo! Come on! It's time, church. Leonard Ravenhill, who was an English evangelist living in 1907 to 1994, said, As long as we are content to live without revival, we will. Ooh. We'll live without it. I'm not content, church, to live without revival. I'm not content, church, amen, no. to live without the fire of God. I'm not content, church, to live without the anointing. I'm not content, church, amen. Come on. Amen. Just with the same old, same old. I'm not content. We've got to have revival. Amen? amen. And I believe that's what God is wanting to speak to you today. Amen. Hallelujah. That God wants to use you. If you're content living without it, then you will do just that. Live without it. But it's time to grab a hold of it. Today. Don't put it off. Grab a hold. I'm going to pray right now. And I believe the fire of God. And by His anointing will begin to ignite that fire as you surrender to the things that have held you back. But you come to Him. Amen. With a resolve in your heart that says no more. No more will I sit, but it's time to take a stand. It's time to start moving. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God, I pray right now, let your fire fall. That your fire will fall in this place. That your fire is falling as those that are watching and listening. That, Lord God, your fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, is setting people ablaze right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, set people ablaze that they will burn for you. That they will live radically and on fire for you, Lord Jesus. This is not a time to stay complacent, to stay locked away. It's time that every single believer, Lord God, as they turn their eyes to you, that you right now, Lord, set them ablaze by your fire. Even now that the anointing would come upon you. That, Lord God, speak to your people. And Lord God, as they have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say, even right now as we're in this time, Lord God. As with this message, I believe, comes the confirmation from you. The confirmation from heaven that you begin to touch people. Lord, it's not me. It's not anything I can do. But it's you, Lord God, right now, touching your people. Transforming your people. Igniting your people. Giving them, Lord God, dreams and visions. It's a time, Lord, that says you outpour your spirit. That there is a great movement that's coming, Lord God. Even in the body of Christ, where complacency, where the things of the world are put off. Even like a coat 
an old ragged coat. It's time, church, to take off those ragged cloths and put on the raiment of God that God is going to lead you in righteousness and that He will order your steps and you will begin to walk in the things of God in His perfect will as you turn your back on the world. You turn your back on the flesh. You turn away from complacency. You turn away from being compliant and status quo and going through the motions. But right now, Lord God, You would set people ablaze, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, anoint them for the task at hand. Equip them, Lord God. Strengthen them. Heal them. Touch them now in the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just I'm just going to give just a moment, amen, that he's touching you. Amen. Look, there are you today that needs to be strengthened. Amen. Come on. You need to be strengthened. Maybe you need health in your body. You need, come on, right now, st supernatural strength supernatural direction supernatural amen healing supernatural hallelujah supernatural hallelujah that's it every sickness i command it to go now in jesus name sickness and disease go in jesus name amen the healing power of god right now that's it yeah you're receiving it right now that's it that's it that's it heal in jesus name by the stripes of jesus you are healed Amen? But supernatural strength. Supernatural. 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 That's it. Supernatural. That's it. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But let me give you that are watching and listening. Amen? Hallelujah. You that are here, just evaluate your heart. But if you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, today is a day of salvation. Look, maybe you that are watching and listening, you've turned your back on God. Somewhere you got complacent, somewhere you got off course. It doesn't matter what that thing was. Turn your back on it, repent, come to Jesus. It's time to fall in love with Jesus all over again. He can never use anybody who's just halfway in. And that's turned their backs on him. So come back to Jesus. He wants to use you in a powerful way. And then those that the devil's lying to you. Telling you're not saved. Maybe you're scared of, this, of sickness. Maybe you're scared of dying. Maybe whatever it is. Those, that fear is going to go. And you will never be scared anymore. In Jesus name. Amen. So if you fit into one of those categories. I'm going to pray with and for you right now. Repeat this after me. Say it out loud. Believe it in your heart. Say dear Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe you are risen from the dead and that one day you're coming back again for me. Fill me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. Totally, radically set me ablaze. That I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. 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 You are saved. You are a child of God. Amen. Remember to run to God and not away from him. Amen. Well, we're going to give everybody an opportunity to give. Do what God tells you to do. Who was blessed this morning? Amen. Amen. I, I tell you what, I, I was really blessed. That... that It's time, church. Amen? We've done everything we, we, we've, we could to actually help other churches and help other people get their doors back open. We're here to help you. Amen? It's, it's really not a time just to back off from the things of God. It's a time to turn up the things of God. Amen? Yes. Do yes. you believe it? I mean, was this? Yes. More than Amen. ever. Yes. More than ever. Yeah. And next Sunday... Liberty Sunday. It's going to be off the chart. Amen. It's going to be epic. It's going to be just phenomenal. I'm telling you. It's just going to be snow to my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Invite everybody. Tell everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, do what God tells you to do as you have your tithes and your offering.
hold them. Amen. And I'm going to pray over them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As everyone sows seed in obedience to you, Lord, this morning. You know, Jesus, you're the author and finisher of our faith, and we want to be obedient to your word. Just like Mary said when they had run out of wine, ran out of juice, at a wedding, and you told those do what he says. And Jesus, as you t instructed them to go fill up the pots with water, that's what we're doing this morning. We're going to fill up. Hallelujah. We're being obedient to you. So as we give, it's just like we're filling those pots with water, Lord. We want to be obedient to you, Jesus, because you're about to turn that offering in an act of obedience, in honoring you, you're about to turn it into something different. You're about to multiply it. You're about to increase it. You're about to bless it. You're about, hallelujah, oh, increase, 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 increase. Now, Lord God, we are blessed to be a blessing as we are obedient to you. And I thank you, Lord God, as we do it, we do it by faith and it's being blessed. It's being multiplied. It's being increased and a mighty harvest is coming our way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You will always get better than what you put. Amen. Dealing with God. As you're obedient this morning. That's what I did. That's the scripture. You say, well, well how did that apply? It, it exactly applies to it. Because really the, re the religion says, oh, well, he turned it into wine. Well, he didn't turn it into alcohol. Very clear. Listen, it's, he did not turn it into alcohol. He turned it into wine. Amen. It was a miracle of provision, not a miracle of drunkenness. So you can get, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It was a miracle of provision. Yes. And he loves weddings. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, bi bi biblical backing, back to all of that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. yes. That's why people go out. We've gone out with different people. And I'm not against it. Look, I'm not, you do whatever you want to do. I'm not, I don't judge. I don't. But that's why I've had people, even relatives. Well, do you mind if I order a glass of wine? And then they'll say, well, Jesus, I mean, the miracle he performed, he turned water into wine. I said, okay, well, then get you a glass of water, turn it into wine, and then you can do it. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> and I said, no, order whatever you want. Amen. No, you know what I'm saying. But that's how people, I mean, you know, I just sometimes I just, you got to look at it as what it's really happened. Amen. But yeah, yeah. But no, no, we, again, no condemnation, no judgment. We look, you, you know, amen. Hallelujah. But I just, hallelujah. But now we're going to take communion together. Amen? amen. Go ahead and pass out the elements. You that are watching, and listening, get out some bread, get some juice. Doesn't have to be, it could be a cracker, it could be bread. Just some juice, whatever you have, amen? We do this in remembrance, it's an act of remembrance, amen? <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Just evaluate. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take the bread. Hold it up. Break it if you like. Jesus took it. He broke bread. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And we do this, Lord, in remembrance of you. It says you were marred beyond recognition. You didn't even resemble a man. They plucked out your beard. They beat you and whipped you. 
They punched you and brutalized you. And you did it all the time with love in your heart for humanity. By your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. It is because of your stripes that sickness and disease cannot remain in our bodies. But those that are sick, healing is the children's bread. And I believe even now as an act of faith and remembrance of what Jesus accomplished for you, even the moment you take this, sickness will depart from you. It will leave you completely in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Jesus. What you accomplished for us through your body is now accomplished in us through your body. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go ahead and take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus paid for that. Jesus, guess what? Jesus took cancer and diabetes, heart disease, every sickness and disease, he took it upon his body. So it has no place in your body. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we take the cup. Represents Jesus' blood. Thank you, Jesus. As we take this this morning, we do it in remembrance of you. That you died for us. You poured out your blood for us. For the remissions of sin. That our sin is blotted out. It is washed and it does not remain. We are cleansed without guilt and shame. Guilt and shame is no more. Your past is the past. And it's because of your blood Jesus that our past can be our past. It can be no more. It's no more. It's a clean slate. It is wiped out. Every sin. Gone. No record. Because of your blood. And we thank you for what you did. As you ransomed us. We were slaves. We are no more slaves. Because of the blood of Jesus. We might have been held captive. By the devil and the world. But you paid the price with your blood. You paid, paid the ransom. The fee. To justify us and free us. So we're not in the hands of the kidnapper anymore. We're in the hands of you Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're part of your kingdom. And we thank you for the blood that also protects us. Because you protect what you own. We're yours. You bought and paid for us. And you protect us. Because we belong to you. And you protect us by the blood. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what. How many of y'all love to come to the Lord's table? Amen. Amen. It's so powerful to me. I feel the anointing on every time. I mean just like so strong. As we come and do in remembrance of him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So don't forget next Sunday. Liberty Sunday. Amen? Amen. It's going to be awesome. Well, we love you. God loves you. Amen? Hallelujah. All the ministers come. So bye-bye. God bless.